Welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church on this, our second Sunday after the Epiphany. Glad to have everyone with us today. Uh, just a few announcements for us today. Uh, our, today is the third Sunday of the month, so we will have our Celtic service uh, tonight at 6 o'clock, right here in the nave of the church. So if you'd like to come back at 6 o'clock this evening, it's a great opportunity to just find a little bit of quiet, uh, and some rest, and, and some time for contemplation to start your week. So I invite you to come back and to join us at 6 o'clock tonight. Uh, secondly, tomorrow the office will be closed. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, day is tomorrow. So I just encourage you to go out with your families if you're able to. And to look for an opportunity to serve our community and uh, participate uh, in that special day. Um, also, just want to let folks know uh, that Diocesan Convention is going to be in two weeks uh, from now. So in two weeks from now we'll have... Uh, the uh, morning prayer service, the morning prayer, as we'll be at the Diocesan Convention. Uh, but I just wanted to give folks kind of a heads up on that. That's coming down, down the track in a couple weeks. Uh, and lastly, if you're visiting with us this morning, we just want to say a special word of welcome. We are so pleased to have you worshiping with us today. If you'd like, there's a visitor's card in the pew rack, and you can fill that out. Uh, when the usher comes by later in the service, you can just put that in the office space, and we'd be glad to reach out to you and extend a uh, further welcome and hospitality to you here at St. John's. Again, glad to have us all gathered here this morning. Let us now take a moment of silence to prepare ourselves for worship. love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. chapter 49, verses 1 through 7. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. I will be glorified. my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant. That you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of holiness. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. The Word of the Lord. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stood to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a high cliff and made my footage short. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are they who trust in the Lord. They do not resort to evil spirits or turn to false gods. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. 
John saw Jesus coming towards him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize you with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Look, here is the Lamb of God. 
the Lamb of God, actually, I went through my concordance this week to see how often we hear that phrase in Scripture. Guess how many times it shows up? Twice. The two times we've heard it today. But you might be thinking, because we're so accustomed to recognizing and referring to Jesus as the Lamb of God, we even have altar hangings that we portray the image of this triumphant Lamb. We've talked so much about Jesus and the Lamb of God that maybe we don't always realize what it is we're talking about. So, as I was saying, I looked at my concordance. There's a whole host of references to a lamb or to lambs. So those are all throughout Scripture. The closest thing that we have to something else referring to Jesus as the Lamb of God, Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians, refers to Jesus as the Paschal Lamb or the Passover Lamb. And that gives us a little bit of insight about how we can understand John's proclamation of Jesus as the Lamb of God. Can anybody recall the Passover story in Scripture? We did a little Bible trivia at 8 o'clock. People weren't quite awake yet, so I gave them a pass. <laughs> but the Passover story, anyone recall maybe what book of the Bible we hear about that? And the back row, what was the choir? Exodus, that's right. The story of Exodus. Thank you, Marty. Love that. BFM. All right, it worked. I love it. Uh, Exodus, the story of Exodus. The Israelites who are on their way to leaving Egypt. And if you recall that story, there are all of these plagues that are sent to give Pharaoh the warning that, hey, let my people go. And the last and final plague was that of the killing of the firstborn. And that was this really tragic moment. But the way in which the Israelites overcame that is, if you recall, the Passover lamb was the lamb that would be taken into the home. It would be slaughtered and killed, and the blood would be painted over the doorpost of the home. It was a sign of the angel of the Lord to pass over those houses, protecting those inside. But not only was that Passover lamb a sign or a marker indicating the promise of God, but also it was a meal. That was the very first meal that they were to eat as they were preparing themselves to leave Egypt. They were to roast it over fire. So the Passover lamb is both an indicator of God's promise, but also a nourisher, something to nourish and sustain the people of God on this journey that they were about. So that's a little bit of our story about this idea of Jesus as the Lamb of God. If he is this Lamb that represents the Passover, the Passover Lamb, it's a reminder of the freedom that we are given, freedom from slavery to our sin. So Jesus as the Lamb of God is that image that John is proclaiming. He's revealing to those who have ears to hear and eyes to see that Jesus is the one who both is the sign of God's promise, but also one who we will give our nourishment from. That's a lot to unpack. And as a church who is sacramental, meaning we celebrate sacraments, those things that are uh, seem to be of ordinary Experience, but they offer a divine grace, something deeper in meaning. We celebrate the Eucharist, the great Thanksgiving. We celebrate that, recognizing that the bread and the wine are sacramental elements of Christ's body and blood, both signs and also sources of our spiritual nourishment. But we do that on a Sunday. In Sunday school today, I asked the question, are there sacramental moments in your Monday through Saturday? Are there sacramental moments that may pop up in ordinary life? Those times where we may find a sign of God's presence with us, but also something that may nourish us in our soul. So think about that for a moment. Is there something that happens in your life? 
Maybe it's an ongoing experience, or maybe it was just a one-time thing. While you're thinking about it, I'll share a story from my experience. When I was a kid growing up, we loved Friday nights. Every Friday night was the one night we could invite our friends over for dinner. And we could invite as many friends as we wanted to. We just had to let mom know how many were coming. And the reason Friday nights were so special is because that was always mom's homemade pizza night. The night she would make homemade pizzas. She would be working all late afternoon into the evening. Just, it would be coming out of the oven all night long. Feeding and nourishing us and our friends. And as I thought about that this week, I thought about how that was a gift of her life, of her devotion, her service and hospitality. That she poured into me, my brothers, and my friends, and into our family. In a way, that was a sacrament of recognizing that there is this abundant generosity at work in my life. And, by the way, it also nourishes us with some tasty pizza. But I think there are people, there are experiences that are often sacramental throughout our life. Maybe even throughout our day. That opportunity where someone may give of himself as an offer and a sign of God's ever giving love to us. Can we celebrate that and say thank you? Thank you to them and thank you to God. That is part of the sacramental life. Finding God at work in everyday, ordinary places. And naming it, calling it out. Behold, that's a blessing from God. But there's another epiphany that happens in our scriptures today. We have the epiphany of Andrew, who, when he encounters Jesus, calls him teacher or rabbi. And then the Messiah, the anointed one. For Andrew, he saw in Jesus one who would guide him in life and in wisdom, but also one who would become his savior, the one who would help lead him out of his sin and darkness and into life. And what does Andrew do with it? I heard somebody shares it. Thank you, Kathy. He shares it. He shares it with his brother. He goes to his brother Simon and says, you've got to see this guy. You've got to meet this Jesus. He's here, the one, the Messiah we've been waiting for. Kind of like the sacrament of sharing my mom's pizza story with me. It was this great moment and this gift that she offered, but it was also something that we were so excited because we could bring all of our friends to the table. That's Jesus' invitation. Come, he says, come with me. There is nourishment, there is life, and there also is a sign of God's love. All in this one who we call the Lamb of God. And God is still at work and living in us and in our lives. So I invite you to consider. Maybe it's just a small epiphany today. Where is God showing unconditional love to you? And what might you do with that? So come, let us taste and see that God is good. Amen. Standing is very
Let's affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 5 in our service bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from God, of one being with the Father. Peace. 
So as I mentioned earlier, uh, Epiphany is a great time to reflect and think about those kind of aha moments or those moments where you might have experienced God at work in your life. 
Uh, as part of our custom, we take this opportunity as a chance to share God moments. Uh, perhaps there's something God has been working on in your life or a blessing that you've had recently that you'd like to share with us uh, as a congregation. And if so, just raise your hand and we'll bring the microphone out to you. So we'll open the floor for God moments. So in the process of the fact that we all share everything, it's almost a communal kind of lifestyle, I was making some soup, my cabbage soup, which I call my restoration soup. I atone for my sins of eating things I haven't <laughs> by eating a cabbage vegetable soup that's actually quite delicious, but it's like what I call restoration soup, I've restored myself. So I thought this would be good for the new neighbors, and I took it down to them, and I took a lot, thinking that, you know, maybe they don't even have any food in the house. And thank you note came a week later, and the man said, you know, thank you for the soup. It restored our body, it restored our soul, and it restored our hope in humanity. <laughs> and I just thought that was so delightful, because he doesn't know yet that this is an everything, everyday thing, the community. People say, hey, got a lot of apples, I'm making something with it, and just take it down to a neighbor. Especially if you know they're ill or sick. New. And the new people there, uh, it was quite uplifting to see the fact that something so little, you can't make it any bitty bit, it's just a soup, you have to make lots of it. So it wasn't anything hard, it wasn't anything backbreaking or whatever else. It was just a gift, and they so appreciated it. Said, there was plenty there for two meals, but we were so ravenous we ate it all. <laughs> so. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Any other God moments you would like to share? Oh, great. You've got a microphone right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, last Saturday, we um, attended a birthday for Steve's aunt who had turned um, 100 during the first week of January. And I thought about sharing this last week. I said, like, yeah. And I thought about it, but it just rides right along with what Elaine said about restoration. And um, same goodness in humanity. His aunt is an avid reader, and they reached out to Danielle Steele, who sent a birthday letter wish to his aunt Eleanor for her 100th birthday, along with an autographed book. And when I shared this with some other friends, they pointed out that also she points out the goodness of her staff. So whoever got that letter put the effort into reaching out to Daniel Steele to make sure that that happened. Wow. And you know, for somebody who turned a hundred, you couldn't have given her a better gift than a book. The surprise party. Yeah. Oh, great. Very nice. Anyone else? We're good. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself for us, and offered in a sacrifice for God.
It is right to give them thanks and praise. It is right to the good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is shed for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command of the Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, the gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon his gifts. They may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the forms of time and all things in subjection unto you, Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where John, Andrew, Peter, and all your saints. We may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever.
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
eternal God, heavenly Father. You have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Friends, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you this day and forever. Depart in peace. Remember the poor. Pray for the sick and love one another. May God, through His Holy Spirit, be within us to refresh us, around us to protect us, before us to guide us, above us to bless us, and beneath us to hold us up through Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise be to God.